This week on Machinery PTV, a great array of equipment was on the auction block at the Leon Hoffman sale, but some of the interest was directed toward this classic Detroit iron. He farms with green, but Jared Finnegan loves his international collectibles. And the Nebraska farming community says goodbye to one of their own. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Peak TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Peak, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Peak thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machine Repeat TV. Now if you follow me online, Facebook, MachineRepeat.com or Farm Journal Magazine, you know I've been talking a lot about how hot the used tractor market is. But I gotta tell you, just as hot or hotter is the market for used pickups and cars. And on our farm retirement auction today in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, we are going to watch an 06 Ford F-150 with just over 36,000 mile cell and a sweet vintage 77 Ford Thunderbird. So buckle up. But first, let's go back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Contract talks between John Deere and its 10,000 striking union workers have resumed. How quickly the two sides can come to an agreement is still unknown. The strike began last Thursday after members overwhelmingly rejected a newly proposed contract. That deal would have meant 5% raises for some workers, 6% for others. Now it covers 14 deer plants. The last time workers went on strike there was back in 1986. The backlog at Western Ports is continuing to grow. At last check, 100 ships are waiting to enter the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. That's a new record. The last record was 97. That was set just last month. And the number's expected to grow with 45 ships scheduled to arrive soon. Now, last week, President Biden announced the Port of Los Angeles would become a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation in an effort to start fixing the supply chain bottlenecks. And I also understand that there are complications. We have to get this orchestra of participants in the supply chain to adjust and get on the same schedule, same calendar. It's going to take some pulling. Others are volunteering, and that's the goal. Get everybody synchronized to the best of our ability so this container flow can start happening. Again, the push system of operations. We know whose cargo is on the docks, where it's located, and how long it's been here. Getting this cargo out with specific commitments of the import community is extremely important to all of us. LA Port Authority say last month the port saw its biggest container volume on record. Meanwhile, export volumes continued to slide last month, down 42% from last year. The executive director of the port saying they haven't seen exports that low since 2002. Now the ratio of imports to exports is now 6 to 1. Now let's check on recent prices from around the country. Hey, now back to our host, Machinery Pete. Hey, stay with us folks, coming up, you're not gonna wanna miss this sweet 60-year-old 1961 International B160 gas rain truck. This thing only has 56,892 one owner miles on it. Well, folks, before the auction, I posted a picture on our Machine Repeat Facebook page of the beautiful line of John Deere tractors on this sale. But this truck was in the picture, and this is what everyone wound up talking about. It is a sweet 1961 International B160 gas single axle 
13 and a half foot box, only 56,892 one owner miles on it. Kansas is in, down George is in, 27, 28, 28, and down 27, now 8, 8, 8, 8, 27, 28, and down 27, give 8, 8, and down 29, and down 28, 29. Anybody else, last call, George, you want back in, 2,800 is the money, 2,900 I'm asking, 2,800 down 2,900, anybody else, 2,900? So, George, good friends, $2,800, go down south, 2,800. Okay, folks, I've got a guest here that we really want to visit with, uh, a guy that's plugged in as anybody I know, Alan Henslin with Henslin Auctions. Alan, this past year, year and a half, has been obviously kind of nuts, but Henslin Auctions, you guys have just grown your business right through it, uh, through COVID, into the online. Of course, you were doing online bidding years ago. Tell mm -hmm. me what the last 18 months have been like for you. Well, when the COVID pandemic first came out and they started putting restrictions on various states. I gotta tell you, I, there was a couple sleepless nights for me. I didn't know how this was all gonna work. Really worried about buyers not purchasing and, and making it difficult for sellers. It was the complete opposite. And, and our sales have just been really strong as, as well as many other auctions throughout the United States. But um, it's uh, all eyes have been on auctions. For, it seems like for the last 18 months and we've seen just some really, really strong sale prices, some excellent sales. Good clean equipment continues to trend up. Uh, uh, newer equipment is getting tougher and tougher to, uh, uh, as far as availability goes with cars and pickups and just a lot of different supplies, you know. So it's, uh, we, th we feel that things are gonna be strong for some time. I was so. you know, noticing again, and COVID hit like right in the middle of auction season of 20. Mm -hmm. And you guys, you know, an auction industry just rolled through, did an awesome job. And then we come into fall of 20 and all of a sudden commodity prices go up. They do. And the market yep. had been kind of rising anyway. Um, what did you see end of 20 into early 21 that, uh, you know, from your seat? It just seemed to, seemed to get stronger and stronger as, as time went on and it was refreshing. Um, it, it was unfortunate that we had the pandemic, but to have uh, commodity prices bounce up, yeah, we, I just think that things are going to remain strong as, as time goes on throughout the end of the year. So. And now, Alan, with Henson Auctions, of course, you guys are very prominent players in the real estate market, have had some a bunch of sales. What What is your honest take there on, on land values here? I think is, is that's a good question. As long as interest rates remain low and uh, these commodity prices have gone up over historically over, over a long period of time, land has been a great, great investment, whether you're an investor, whether you're a farmer. Um, I, I just really think that these land values are, are gonna continue to trend upward as well too. Well folks, this is gonna be really fun. A cool vintage vehicle here, a 1977 Ford Thunderbird, under 100 miles on a new engine. Now the AC does need some repair, but I tell you what, I don't care how hot you are driving this car, you are gonna be super cool tooling down Main Street, hometown USA. Three thousand dollars, two thousand three, three four, three down to the dumb four down to the dumb three be a dumb four down four down three down to the dumb four down to the dumb five down to the dumb four be a five four down to the dumb five down to the dumb four down to the dumb five down to the dumb four down to the dumb five down to the dumb four be a dumb five four thousand five thousand give forty five 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 forty five to the dumb five down to the dumb forty five. Now five thousand forty seven and a half five forty seven and a half five down to the dumb five five forty seven and a half five down to the dumb forty seven and a half give five forty seven and a half five down to the dumb five 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 forty seven and a half give forty nine forty seven and a half forty nine hundred. That's a lot of car. That's a lot of car. Five thousand dollars. Forty nine hundred and five thousand dollars. Anybody else? Five thousand. Forty nine hundred and five hundred and forty nine. Give five. Sold it. Forty nine hundred away. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. 34,500. Sell it to him. 34,000. He knows what to do. $34,000. Anybody else? Last call. 13, two and a half. 13, two and a half. 13,000, 13, two, 50. Sold it. $13,000. Here we go. 46 down, 4,700. Anybody else? $4,700. Sold it, Brad. $4,600 to wait. 72 and a half, 75. Everybody gave it down, 7500 dollars Last call. 72 and a half, 7500 dollars 72 and a half, 7500 Sold 72 for the year ways. 800 feet down, we put it down, we did it down, we have we did it down, 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 we did it down,
Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com. Well, folks, the uh, farm equipment market here, end of 2021, is just really something. I have not seen it like this in my 32 years tracking the market since 1989. And a lot of angles to it. Now, recently on our Machine Repeat Facebook page, I asked our audience a two-part question. One, what are you seeing in terms of new equipment lead times uh, for equipment you bought or, you know, are looking at? And two, what about parts availability? And gosh, in just a couple hours, we had over 40 responses here. We'll scroll through, give you a chance to look at some of those. But again, this market is just kind of unprecedented. Now, um, I think the only correlation that I've heard that would be accurate would be uh, 1973. Um, now, the problem is I was seven years old then. I wasn't tracking auction prices. But obviously, here on the show every week and uh, on our website, machinerypeat.com, social media posts, YouTube, I've been documenting how used values have been rising like crazy. And of course, part of that is, you know, stronger farm income, but a huge piece of why used values are going up is what's happening with new equipment. One, with price increases, um, and we understand that with the price of steel going up, labor issues, shipping costs, every, all the various factors at work. But beyond the huge price increases, which I'm hearing anywhere from 15 to 35 plus percent, is just the straight fact, can I get it if I want a new plant or a new combine? Um, just that shortage. Um, and then, of course, the issues you're having getting that piece of new equipment is pushing a lot of people back into the used market. And again, it, it's just kind of uh, this fire that just keeps building uh, used values rising. And as we look ahead to the, you know, as I record this, as I look ahead to the end of 2021, on into the start of 22, right through 22, gosh, it, it's hard to see this slowing down at all in terms of demand for good condition used equipment and pressure, um, you know, to get that piece of new equipment. So it'll be really interesting to follow through 2022 here. So stay tuned to machinerypeat.com, folks, for the very latest. We farm here in Ashcombe, my, uh, my dad and my brother and I. Always kind of been equipment enthusiasts. We got some of grandpa's old tractors and just kind of have grown. My grandpa's dad was a big international guy. We actually have John Deere equipment that we farm with, but um, I kind of got into internationals about 15 years ago and, and I've got about eight internationals. I bought it from a gentleman up in Minnesota. The Wheatland tractors aren't really uh, popular in this part of the country. Um, and I guess I'm kind of a goof and kind of like some odd stuff or different stuff that people don't always have. This is the condition I bought it in. It was restored and sometimes we fix some of them up ourselves and sometimes you get lucky and find them the way you want them. And uh, my brother's into Oliver's and we got some Alice Chelmers and we kind of had a little of everything over the years, but uh, I, I kind of like the Wheatlands and really, how can you not like a, a 1206? So we'll parade them and tractor shows and that type of deal and we, uh, had it in a parade just yesterday actually. It's a little bit unique for the area being a Wheatland and people are pretty impressed with with it and I get a lot of thumbs up at tractor shows and that old 70 year old guy in an international hat I get a lot of this and that just makes my day it makes me think of my grandpa and pretty cool. Got a set of uh, 24 uh, rear rims and centers that are would be factory with that tractor and and it probably should have had wide tires, a lot of them would have, and I, eventually I'm gonna switch out. Yeah, I'm pretty partial to the 1206. It's just an impressive looking tractor. I always wanted one since I was a little kid.
Hey, stay tuned folks, coming up, you're not gonna wanna miss the feature item on our show today. This sweet 2006 Ford F-150 4x4, only 36,147 miles on it. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit machinerepeat.com and click Sell Mine. Machinerepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. Okay, folks, uh, we're here with owner Leon Huffman uh, in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. And Leon, despite all your beautiful tractors and equipment, uh, this pickup was drawing a lot of interest. An 06 model F-150, just over 36,000 miles on it. Wow. Yeah, That's first, four miles. First pickup I ever owned. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, my second wife, when we met, uh, I picked her up in that T-Bird for our first date. And uh, That is quite a car, by the way, the green yeah. T-Bird. And she says, where's the, where, do you have a pickup? Are you, what are, I, I said, I'm a farmer, but I sleep guy. He said, well, do you have a pickup? Well, no. So she didn't even, she doubted that I was a farmer. But I, no, I never owned a pickup, and I, I, I had a motorcycle that I would go back and forth to the field with. So you got by a lot of years with no pickup. I got fine. by, yeah, a lot of years with no pickup. And when I did this, bought this pickup, I just looked at this as a real luxury. Well, as tough as it is to get a new pickup now, yeah, uh, here's a 15-year-old with low miles. Have you been getting uh, some inquiries from people about a lot, this? A lot of calls about the pickup. Um, I had no intention of getting a new pickup, but with the tax situation mm -hmm. and the way it is, my accountant said, treat yourself, buy a new pickup. Uh, he said, Fine, we'll be able to work that probably you won't pay as much for the pickup as you think. Anybody else? Last call. Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-two thousand. Twenty-one five. Brad, what do you say? Twenty-two thousand dollars. Twenty-one five. Twenty-two thousand dollars. Sold the pickup. Twenty-one thousand five hundred. Congratulations. Well, folks, we talked about how hot this used pickup market is. It's hotter, hotter than the used tractor market. Our feature item, the 06 uh, Ford F-150 with just over 36,000 miles on it, sells for $21,500. That is tied for the highest auction price ever on an 06 model F-150. Well folks, the farm equipment community sadly lost a great friend recently with the unexpected and sudden passing of 38-year-old Bryce Volker from Auburn, Nebraska. Bryce passed away October 2nd uh, just 10 days shy of his 39th birthday. You maybe saw the outpouring across egg social media with the hashtag augers out for Bryce. And of course it's harvest season, but Bryce was just so connected with so many folks. Uh, he was well known as the founder and administrator of a vibrant Facebook group for John Deere 3070 series tractors. Uh, tons of folks talked to him every day, texting back and forth weekly. And Bryce was also in the auction business a seed dealer and just a farmer to the core. And you could really tell from people's uh, posts on social media the impact that Bryce had just as a friend. Um, and although his time with us was much shorter than any of us would have liked, I think Bryce was a great example of making the time that we do have, the days we're blessed with, count. So Bryce, we miss you and uh, rest in peace, brother. Well, folks have asked me for years, Pete, do you ever buy anything at the auction? And the honest truth is no, I've never bought a piece of equipment. But I gotta tell you, I think I blew it today, folks. It's my 32nd wedding anniversary today. And somewhere on that magical anniversary list of gifts you need by the anniversary date, I think the 32nd is something green. I should have bought this Ford Thunderbird for Mrs. Pete. But I tell you what, 
Tune in next week to Machinery Repeat TV. Maybe I'll redeem myself. Machinery Repeat thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers. Let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.